Welcome to the REI Video Management Software Training Series. This is a six-part video that will cover how to load a video, how to play a video, playback controls, playback features, additional playback features, and how to save a video. Open the VMS viewing software. Plug your hard drive or SD card into your computer. The data will appear under the HDD heading in the top left corner under Playback. Double click the bus number and the data will automatically load on your calendar. Days that video has been captured will be placed on the calendar in either red or green. A red segment means that there was an alarmed event that day. That could include an event such as a driver pressing the event marker to flag a clip of video or a bus going over a speed threshold. When you click a desired day, the segments for that day will load below the calendar. Any alarmed events will appear in red. By clicking that event, it will tell you why it was alarmed. Double click the event to view. All of the video panes are drag and drop, so you can lay them out however you would like. If you'd like them sized differently, you can click on the layout buttons down on the bottom right or add and delete cameras as necessary. You can double click on any pane to make it full screen. You can click on any video pane to hear the audio. The camera you are currently listening to will be outlined in green. Down on the bottom are your playback controls. They work like your basic VCR or DVD player. You have your play, pause, rewind, fast forward, or slow motion. If you pause, you can step forward or backward frame by frame. You can also adjust the volume by clicking and sliding over the speaker icon. You can also click into the video at any point on the time bar. If you click on the time scale button, on the left, it will increase or decrease the scale of time intervals from 24 hours, 6 hours, hourly, or 10 minutes. On every pane of video, there are three icons on the top right. They are your zoom, snapshot, and blur functions. Click on the magnifying glass to activate the zoom feature. Draw around an area you want to zoom in on. I suggest drawing a rectangle to keep the aspect ratio as close to the original as possible. To exit out, double click the pane or click on the magnifying glass. Next up is the snapshot feature. This takes a still picture of your video. Click the camera icon and the still will open in a separate window. This lets you save the picture in any file format. Email it on the fly by attaching it into your email client to send in or out of your organization. You can also zoom in on the picture using the lasso and crop features. You can add blur to protect the privacy of other riders. You can also add text below a picture. If you hit clear, it will delete any changes you made. Last is the blur feature. Clicking the checkerboard icon opens the blur menu. Click add blur rectangle and draw around the subject you either want to blur or show and hit the green check mark.
You can inverse the blur by going back up to the blur menu and selecting inverse blur. You can also adjust the level of blur in the blur menu by moving the slider left or right. Hit clear all to get rid of the blur. The italic I button brings up your information screen. This gives you information about your DVR and also some of the accessories. It will tell you the firmware that is currently installed on the DVR. It will tell you the district or company name and bus number, and also the voltage and temperature of the DVR. It also gives you information on some of our additional accessories. It gives you the G-forces from our accelerometer. This measures the G-forces of the bus, so any hard braking, excessive acceleration, or hard turns can be monitored. With our GPS antenna, it records the latitude and longitude, as well as the speed of the bus, and will plot it on the map that I will show you later. And lastly, with our vehicle sensor harness, you can monitor eight inputs on the bus, such as the red and yellow warning lights, turn signals, stop arm, brakes, front and rear doors. Whenever the driver activates one of these inputs, it will light up in red. The graph button lets you graph the speed, accelerometer information, and temperature and voltage of the bus. The satellite icon opens up the GPS map. It takes the latitude and longitude from the information screen and plots it on the map. It not only shows you where the associated video was recorded, but the route the bus took that day. If you click anywhere on the breadcrumb trail, it will take you right to that part of the video. To tie all these features together, we also have our search feature. By clicking on search, it will allow you to search for any time where there was video recorded. Search by any inputs, search by an over or under speed threshold, or search by any G-forces. It will also allow you to search by a geofence to let you see if the bus went in or out of a given area. I am going to search for a stop arm input. My results are shown below the search icon with a time and date stamp. They are also plotted on the time bar with a red hash mark as well as on the GPS map so I can see exactly where my driver made their stops. The last icons on the playback menu are the save icon and the settings icon. The settings icon lets you pick the default folder where your video is saved to. I suggest you create a folder on your desktop and name it bus video or anything that pertains to you. By clicking on the floppy disk icon, it will open up two orange slider arrows on the timeline. Drag the left arrow to where you want the video to start and the right arrow to where you want it to end. It will give you the option to save the video in two different formats. You can also save blur in any of these formats. Native HD5 requires the REI viewing software to play the video back. Standard MP4 will play multiple panes of video along with accessory information on one window that cannot be manipulated. Click the More Options box to open up a window to customize the video you are saving. You can select only the cameras you want saved and by clicking the Browse box, you can save the video to a specific location, such as a thumb drive, a network folder, or any other folder you wish to save it to. It will also, once again, give you a chance to change the format. Click OK to complete the save. This concludes the VMS Software Training Series.